Hello, Driving Intelligence community. This video is for those of you that own a 2000 through 2003 10th generation and 2004 heritage model F-150 with the 5.4 two-valve engine. Well, some of you may have had the problem of a cracked intake. The plastic intake manifold on these is notorious for cracking where the coolant goes from one side to the other. Well, I just got finished gutting this 99 F-150 with the 5.4. The 99s for the F-150s were the only ones that came with the aluminum intake and I've just taken that out. I'm gonna take it home and clean it up and I'm gonna keep it on the side until I need the intake for my F-150, which is plastic, 2002 with 242,000 miles. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but it's doable. The hardest part are those two bolts in the back that hold the intake manifold down, but there's only, I believe it's five on each side. I took the fuel rails off first, took all the coil packs out and that gave me access to those last two bolts which were a little difficult but as you can see i did it but it gives you a little bit of a view also of what the uh, the uh, underside of the intake looks like that's where the knock sensor is the uh, the temperature sensor for the head etc so uh it's going to be a pretty cool project and the nice thing about aluminum is that i can port it a little bit better view of this when I'm talking about porting and polishing. So I'm gonna port the uh, gasket match these intake runners to the head, but I'm also gonna polish every one of these runners going down into this plastic box to make sure that I've got smooth laminar flow, that smooth flow versus turbulent flow caused by this casting irregularity. I'm also gonna port match the intake manifold, uh, upper intake to the throttle body. I've got an oversized throttle body, so I'm gonna make sure this is as big open as the exit of the throttle body. Now just to point out a couple other things, I had to take all the parts off the top of this when I pulled this intake out. Um, the throttle body cables and all that stuff. I didn't talk about that in the video earlier because it's not that big a deal. Probably the hardest part is getting the EGR system off. I had to actually bend the pipe because I couldn't get it broken loose at the bottom. So I took the, took the EGR off with the bolts here, pulled it out of the way, and that gave me clearance to get this out. You'll have to remove the alternator to get this out of the way because that big plastic section down there is blocked by the alternator. And what you also want to do is make sure you get all the bolts that bolt this to the head. There's 10 of them. They're a different length than from a stock, uh, the uh, plastic stock intake manifold. So make sure you grab those. That'll definitely help the install. You won't have to run back to the hardware store or somewhere else to get those. Hope you like this. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.